Hello students, I am teacher Svetlana and in our today's lecture we will learn about organisms and the environment around them and the major abiotic factors which is covered in the chapter organism and population. So let's begin. Students, you are already aware that ecology is a study of the interaction among organisms and between the organisms and their physical, that is the abiotic environment. Ecological grouping of organisms is nothing but ecological hierarchy. There are four sequential levels in increasing complexity of ecological or the biological organizations which are listed here. You can see the organism, the population, the communities and the biomes. Individual organism is the basic unit of the ecological hierarchy. Organisms of the same kind inhabiting in a geographical area constitute a population. Several populations of different species in a particular area constitute a community that interact with one another in several ways. Biome constitutes a large regional territory unit delimited by a specific climatic zone having major vegetation zone that is the plant communities and the associated fauna. There are six major groups of terrestrial biomes. We shall explore the first two levels which is the organism and the population. Ecology at the level of organism is basically the study of animal or plant physiology which helps us to understand how the organisms are adapted to their environments not only for their survival but also for their propagation that is for their multiplication here we must remember that it is not only the physiochemical or the abiotic components that make up the habitat of an organism but the habitat also includes biotic components like plants pathogens parasites and predators of the organism here, I have listed all the biotic as well as the abiotic components. We assume that over a period of time, the organism has through natural selection evolved adaptations to optimize its survival and reproduction in the habitat. Now students, let us understand what is an habitat and a niche. Habitat is a place or the set of environmental conditions around the organism to which it must adapt to survive and prosper. On the other hand, the term niche is used to denote the functional role played by an organism in its environment. Niche includes various aspects of life of an organism like the diet, shelter, etc. A habitat defines the physical space of an organism with the other living or non-living factors, while niche describes how that organism is linked with its physical and biological environment. In colloquial language, habitat is a postal address, while niche is the profession of an organism. So, I've put down the basic difference between habitat and niche for you. Habitat is a place where an organism lives out its life. So it is where the organism finds its food, shelter and mates. And niche, it is the role in the community and how it interacts with its environment. So niche is basically how it obtains its food, mate and protection from predators. So now students, let us understand the definition of habitat and niche. Habitat, the place or the area where a particular species lives is its habitat. Factors like sunlight, average rainfall, annual temperatures, type of soil present and the other abiotic that is topographic factors affect the presence of an organism. These factors help in determining the presence of the particular type of species in the environment. Niche is described as a position of a species in the environment like what they do for their survival, how they fulfill their needs of this shelter, food, etc. Niche deals with the flow of energy from one organism to another and hence it is important to understand what an organism eats, how it interacts with the other organisms, etc. As soon as the niche is left vacant, other organism fills that position. The niche is specific to each species which means no two species can share the same niche. 
To understand this, students take an example of a bird. It can be understood that how these birds differ in their eating habits. Well, some birds eat only insects, some eat only fruits and some can eat both and anything that they come across. So here we can conclude that these birds living in the same habitat differ in their niche because of their different eating habits. Here is a difference uh, between habitat and niche. You can pause the video for a while and have a look at it. Let us have a look at the types of niche. We have spatial or habitat niche. It deals with the physical space occupied by the organisms. Then we have a trophic niche. It is based on the trophic level of an organism in a food chain that is the tropic level uh, at which the organism is present in the food chain then we have multi-dimensional or hyper volume niche it considers the number of environmental factors both biotic and abiotic the resulting space will be a hyper volume not something that can be perceived by the human mind this space is called as hyper volume niche Alternatively, it is a position of an organism in the environmental gradient. For every species, there is a fundamental niche and a realized niche. Fundamental niche is a niche in the absence of all competitors. This is highly improbable in nature. Or improbable in nature means it is uh, technically not possible where an uh, organism will not have any competition hence we have a realized niche it is the most realistic approach in the presence of competition for resources available in the habitat so uh, a realized niche is uh, a place where organisms are uh, present in that habitat along with a suitable competition for the resources now let us have a look at the major abiotic factors, key abiotic factors that influence any habitat and um, are uh, the ambient temperatures, availability of water, light and type of soil. So let us have a look at each of these. First one, the temperature. It is the most ecologically relevant environmental factor. Average temperature on land varies from sub-zero levels in the polar area and high altitudes upwards up to 50 degrees Celsius in tropical deserts in summer. Temperature also varies seasonally. Only a few organisms can tolerate and thrive in a wide range of temperatures. They are called as urethermal, but a vast majority of them are restricted to a narrow range of temperatures which are called as stenothermal. Then the next important factor is water. Availability of water is an important factor affecting the organisms. As we know, life on earth originated in water. Its availability is so limited in deserts that only special adaptations are required to survive there. The productivity and the distribution of plants are also heavily dependent on water. Organisms live in water bodies such as ocean, lakes and rivers have their own water related problems. For aquatic organisms, the chemical composition and the pH of water are very important. For example, some organisms are tolerant for a wide range of salinity. They are called as urihaline. But others are restricted to a narrow range. They are called as stenohaline. Many freshwater animals cannot live for long in seawater and vice versa because of the osmotic problems they would face. The next factor is light. Plants use light for photosynthesis which is the only source of energy for the entire ecosystem. Photosynthesis can occur only in presence of sunlight. Many species of small plants like herbs and shrubs growing on forest floor are adapted to perform photosynthesis optimally under very low light conditions because they are constantly overshadowed by tall trees. For animal too, diurnal and seasonal variations in light intensity and duration that is photo period are clues for timing. They are foraging, reproductivity and migrating activities. That is the migratory activities. The availability of life on land is closely linked with that of temperature since the sun is the source of both. 
Soil is our next major abiotic factor. The nature and properties of soil are dependent on the climate, the weathering process. Various characteristics of soil such as soil composition, grain size determine the percolation and water holding capacity of the soil. These characteristics along with the pH, mineral composition and topography determines the vegetation in any area. Vegetation in turn detects the type of animals. So, to survive and flourish in any environment, organisms must adapt to the changes in the environment for which they are following possibilities. First is regulate. Here, students, some organisms are able to maintain homeostasis by physiological and behavioral changes, which ensures constant body temperature, constant osmotic concentrations, etc. All birds and mammals are capable of such regulations, that is called as thermoregulations and osmoregulations. Then the next uh, adaptation is conform. Most of the animals and plants cannot maintain a constant internal environment. Their body temperature changes with the ambient temperature. In aquatic animals, the osmotic concentration of the body fluid changes with that of the ambient water osmotic concentrations. These animals and plants are simply conformers. Some species have evolved the abilities to regulate within a limited range of environmental conditions beyond which they simply conform. If the stressful environment is localized or only for a short period of time, the organisms may migrate or suspend its activities. So, further, what do they do to survive? They migrate. In migration, the organism moves away temporarily from the stressful habitat to a more hospitable area and returns when the stressful period is over. Many animals, particularly birds, during winter undertake long distance migrations to a more hospitable area. And the final way is to suspend. Suspend is, uh, is in many plants, seeds serve as means to tide over periods of stress. They germinate to form new plants under favorable moist and temperature conditions. So, due to uh, the reducing of their metabolic activities and going in a state of dormancy, uh, these plants suspend their growth. In animals, the organism, if unable to migrate, may go into hibernation during winters. Example, polar bear. Some nails and uh, sorry, some snails and fishes go into estivations to avoid summer heat. So, these are some of the adaptations that uh, the organisms show to survive in their environment. As discussed, in order to survive and flourish, an uh, organism should adapt. So, let's understand what is adaptation. To cope up with extreme variations in their environment, some organisms respond through physiological adjustments, while others do so behaviorally, like migrations. These are their adaptations. Therefore, we can say that adaptation is an attribute of an organism. Morphologically, physiologically and behavioral that enables the organism to survive and reproduce in its habitat. Many desert plants have a thick cuticle on their leaf surfaces and have their stromata in deep pits to minimize loss of water through transpiration. They also have special photosynthetic pathways that, that is the CAM pathway that enables the stromata to remain closed during daytime. During some of these desert plants like opuntia have their leaves reduced or modified to spines and the photo function of photosynthesis is taken over by the flattened stem. Mammals for colder climates generally have shorter snouts, ears, tails and limbs to minimize the loss of body heat. In the polar seas, aquatic mammals like seals have a thick layer of fat below their skin acting as an insulator to reduce loss of body heat. Thank you students for participating in this lecture. See you soon again with the next topic. Till then, take care, be safe and keep learning.